When you're working with gas welding and cutting operations, there are a number of safety procedures to follow. The welding or cutting area must be protected against fire hazards posed by combustible and flammable materials. Welding operations have caused a high number of major fires. Due to the potential for fires, explosions, and health hazards, cutting or welding must be carefully controlled. Never weld or cut in the presence of mixtures of flammable gases, vapors, liquids, or dusts with air, or inside improperly cleaned tanks or equipment which have previously contained such material. Never weld or cut near large quantities of exposed, readily ignitable materials such as bulk sulfur, baled paper, or cotton. When cylinders are not connected for use, valve protection caps must be in place unless the cylinder is not designed to accept a cap. Stored oxygen cylinders must be separated from stored fuel cylinders or combustible materials, especially oil or grease, by at least 20 feet or by a non-combustible barrier. All cylinders must be legibly marked to identify their contents. Cylinders connected for use must be lashed or chained to prevent them from falling over. The regulator is a delicate piece of equipment and must be handled carefully at all times. Use an end wrench of proper size. Leave the valve wrench on the acetylene cylinder whenever the valves are open. Hoses showing leaks, burns, or worn places must be replaced or repaired. Hoses should be color-coded to avoid accidental mixing of the gases. You can see in this graphic the green hose is for oxygen and it has a right-hand thread. The red hose is acetylene and has a left-hand thread. Check hose connections for proper threading. Standard hose connections are threaded right-hand for oxygen and left-hand for acetylene or other fuel gases. Periodically inspect the hoses and check them for leaks. Don't use matches. Use a friction lighter to light the blowpipe. When shutting off the torch, close the torch valves. Acetylene first, then the oxygen. Close the cylinder valves again. Acetylene first, then the oxygen cylinder. Experienced welders understand the term cracking a cylinder. This is simply opening the cylinder valve slightly and then closing it to remove any potential dust or debris inside the valve. Cracking is accomplished before installing regulators. When leaving the area, don't leave pressure in the hoses. Shut off the oxygen and acetylene at the cylinder. Never use a hard, sharp tool for cleaning tips, except where such tools may be specifically recommended by or supplied by the tip manufacturer. Use appropriate tip cleaners. Naturally, the material you're welding or cutting must be approved for such use. No welding or cutting should be performed on used drums, barrels, tanks, or other containers until they have been cleaned thoroughly, eliminating all flammable materials and all substances such as greases, tars or acids which might produce flammable or toxic vapors when heated. Use a cleansing agent appropriate for the gas or liquid which was in the container. Clean the container a second time with either water or steam. All hollow spaces, cavities, or containers should be vented to permit the escape of air or gases before preheating, cutting, or welding. Without listing all the health hazards, let's just review a few of the hazards that can occur in the welding cutting operations. Acetylene is one of the most commonly used fuels for gas welding, cutting, and brazing. It is capable of displacing oxygen from the atmosphere, reducing it to a level below that required by your body. The major hazard is the explosion potential. Acetylene becomes unstable at excessive pressures, so do not pressurize it above 15 PSIG or 30 PSIA. Chromium is the primary alloying agent in stainless steel. Chromium compounds are strong oxidizing agents and are extremely toxic and irritating to the skin, eyes, and mucous membranes. Although welding under normal operations would not be expected to produce hazardous concentrations of chromium compounds, welding of stainless steel should be carried out in well-ventilated areas. Fluoride compounds are found in the coating of several types of fluxes used in welding. 
exposure to these fluxes may irritate the eyes, nose, and throat. Exposure to fluoride dusts and fumes has also produced skin rashes. Zinc is used in large quantities in the manufacture of brass, galvanized metals, and various other alloys. Exposure to these fumes is known to cause metal fume fever, with symptoms similar to those of common influenza. The most effective measure of reducing exposure to fumes is to work in a well-ventilated area. Where this is not possible, portable ventilation systems can be used to extract welding fumes from your breathing zone. Some of the physical agents that can be harmful to welders is ultraviolet radiation when using arc welding. Skin exposure to ultraviolet radiation can result in severe burns. UV radiation can also damage the lens of the eye. Infrared radiation produced by the electric arc and other flame cutting equipment may heat the skin surface and the tissues immediately below the skin surface. Use protective clothing to prevent this type of hazard. There are a variety of specially designed eye protection for each type of welding operation. Be sure you know what specific type eye protection is used for each operation. If you're not sure, ask your supervisor or the equipment manufacturer for specific information. Welding and cutting is a safe operation if you follow the rules. If you try to take shortcuts or not follow proper procedures, it could become a hazardous job. Take time for safety and health because you're worth it. Thank you.